Uh, Rudy, thank you, thank you for joining us. I'm happy that, like, uh, Filippi talked about the uh, human digital transformation for human, and now you're talking about digital transformation. I'm going to give you the screen, and you lead for the next 15, 20 minutes. Thank you for that, Andre. Uh, and let me share also a small presentation. You know, I have to, I had to compact it into. Uh, 15 minutes. So, hope everyone can see me. Okay. Yes, we can. So, uh, the talk today is about digital transformation. And uh, I want to thank Filippi for, you know, you know, coming after Filippi is really tough because uh, <laughs> he's a master in my book. So, uh, I have to try to level to his uh, level. Uh, when we talk about digital transformation, again, uh, it is about not the technology. It's about way beyond of technologies because this is something, uh, I'm, I'm a technology specialist, uh, strategist, and this is where I am. So people really, the first thing you tell them is how oh, digital transformation is about technology, but it's actually a small part and then we'll see it. So I compacted my presentation uh, to try to really uh, give everybody the, the real uh, information. So just quickly about my background. I have 20 uh, years in uh, IT. Uh, I'm specialized in governance, compliance, uh, and uh, so on. I'm a certified with many achievements. I've been active speaker, uh, board member, coach, mentor for different startups. And lately I'm writing my own book. So hopefully within the beginning of the new year, we can uh, hopefully uh, publish it. I'm a host and moderator of the X Talk series and recently selected as top 50 global uh, leader and influencer. So I hope you're seeing the slides because I'm seeing something I did not like. Andre, can you confirm on uh, Facebook that they are? Uh, okay. Yes, we can see the slides and we can okay. see. Because I'm on, my, on my screen, it's only showing a part of it. Okay, so I'll continue. Uh, here you can contact me anytime, Rudy Shushani across all. So really, I want to ask you today, uh, what is your definition of digital transformation? If you can write on the chat, I'll be happily to take them to try to really have a small discussion, even if we want to waste a minute or two, because we want to reach really what is the digital transformation. Filippi talked about more on the human side of transformation. We I'm talking more about the company side of transformation or corporate world or government world or whatever, but I want your definition. So if there's any comments, Andre, coming, please uh, try to really uh, help me on this. There will be comments, but I know that we have the delay from Zoom to Facebook. So uh, if you would okay, like- I'll, 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 I'll go further yeah. and then hopefully if there's anything. So the first definition of Gartner, it's a digital business transformation is the process of exploiting digital technologies and supporting capabilities to create robust uh, new business. Digital transformation is adoption of technology. That's another terminology to transform services or businesses through replacing non-digital manual process with digital processes or replacing all the technologies with the newer process. And we've seen this in banking sectors because I've been faced by anything. Oh, the banking is actually digitally transform transforming. They are, but they are not really full digital transformation. They're giving us channels. They're giving us some sort of uh, digital uh, experiences, but it's not uh, where we are. So another uh, explanation, it's the process of digital technology create a new or modify uh, business process, culture, customer to meet changing needs and market requirements. This is, the, for me, this is the real digital transformation uh, meaning. Just this is reimagining the business in the digital age and actually really disrupting uh, the whole art of disruption of digital transformation. And this is where digital transformation is key today. And our, our definition, digital transformation is a disruption at the core. It's about bringing something new, reinventing, renovating, disrupting your business or even yourself. So this is the core 
of digital transformation today is it's not a small subtle change we're going to that further on so unfortunately with this format there's no uh, animation anyway so who actually led uh, digital transformation and then we see here uh, the board the ceo or was it i'll move this side or was it COVID 19 and I've, i'm sure you've seen this uh, all over the internet and we're lucky today because of COVID 19 okay we know we understand that COVID 19 has really impacted our lives and it changed the whole thing but thank you COVID 19 for this because it's also digitally transforming everybody even my grandmother is digitally transforming and this is excellent so now with this it gives us push it gives us adoption it gives us many things that will help us so first thing we say why are we talking about actually disruption and we'll explain more because there's a lot of things happening customer expectation there's the generation z and the generation x there's emerging technology uh, there's a lot of competition public perception regulation are changing so there's a big mess happening throughout the world and our i will focus on two parts today because some of my colleagues previously on this uh, from Christine and uh, I think Maher also discussed many points regarding the culture and, and so on. I'll, I'll, I'll try to touch it from the technology and the strategy part. So the top challenges facing of digital transformation is first one is changing culture. This is the most important thing because if it's not driven from top down and it's not coming from a culture of the company, the whole thing will fail. The second one is mentality. The third one is departments and silos, uh, resources. So the impact of human is crucial and we need it. And this is where uh, uh, the culture comes in. Now, transforming versus uh, change. <clears throat> change is fixing the past, small improvement, possibly a bigger improvement could take some time, but transformation is actually creating new and no past constraints, you're not building across something old. This is crucial. When we talk about transformation, we're not building from our past. We're going to the future and we're targeting the future. <clears throat> so this is another more key points about transformation. So it's subscribed, the change is subscribed to the vision where on the transformation side, it's prescribed the vision <clears throat> driven by tactics where it's here, it's driven by strategy and so on and so on. So, I will only mention what is innovation because we need to talk in our transformation about innovation, but I will not dive deep in it because Maher did a great job, I think yesterday, sorry, before yesterday, and uh, he, he's, he's amazing. So, it's a modern meaning and a new idea, creative thoughts, new imagination in form of device or method. Innovation is also often viewed as the application of better solution that meets new requirements. But why I wanted to explain what is innovation, because I want to come to the next part of transformation, which is really the disruptive innovation. And what is really disruptive innovation? It's a new term. Somehow it's a new term. An innovation that creates a new market. And this is the most important part of digital transformation. Digital transformation about creating a new market. So it's, it's allied with the disruptive innovation. A new value market. And eventually it would disrupt an existing market and the value network. The whole thing, it will really disrupt it. And we'll see something later on that could explain it better. Displacing established market leading firms and competent companies such as the big banks or and so on and creating something new. So with this graph, which was uh, created by uh, Clayton, it will tell us where is actually the disruptive uh, technology happening. And if you see here on the side where on the lower end, it's entering disruptive trajectory. And this is where the disruption is happening versus the normal incumbent uh, sustaining trajectory, which is uh, the whole model of innovation is happening. It's a normal trajectory where uh, companies and incumbents, which is companies, older companies, they don't go into certain markets where new people comes in and they take the whole lead of, so they enter in the low end market and then they start going up and up to the high end market. So for them to take over the whole market. So it's four stages quickly of disruption. It's early stage, 
new industry trends, new business model, and of course, the most important thing, the last one is disruption acceptance. And we, this is where we see uh, Apple in 2007, they, when they released the iPhone, and this is the part where people now started uh, accepting. So in, let's talk about a little bit of technology, emerging technology and Internet of Things. I have to mention Internet of Things because it's a $11 trillion uh, market by itself. One of the most beautiful and most re rewarded markets that we will see in the future. So we'll, talk, we'll quickly talk about the top 10 te emerging technology. First one is Internet of Things. Uh, second one is artificial intelligence. Third one is 5G, and then we are living somehow in the age of 5G. So serverless computing, this is more or less cloud. Uh, the blockchain into many applications for the, from fintechs or banking, robotics in our daily life and processes and so on, to biometrics, new ways of having biometrics, 3D printing, and we're seeing a lot of innovation on 3D printing, and there's a lot of Lebanese innovation. They even use 3D printing in cement and concrete uh, house printing, virtual reality, augmented reality, and the drones. If you see the drones, or if you see the film business in the last 10 years, it was heavily disrupted by drones from helicopters to cameraman and so on, and hundreds of thousands of dollars into less than $800. So I don't know if I can share this video, Cows to the cloud. I really love it. Uh, let me try it if it works. If it doesn't, we'll continue. I, I don't think it will, it, will, uh, it will. Anyway, so this is a scenario here where clouds really go to the cloud. And this is a, a movie about real disruption where things go and you connect a cloud, uh, sorry, you connect a cow to the cloud and the factory where cows are all over the place by farmers they have a tag on them with an IoT, they follow them, they monitor them, they know when to talk, when to eat, they know when is the breeding. They, so they are following all of this technology sensors are, are coming from the cow for them to really innovate into a back-end system following many, many thousands of cows into the digital transformation. And we're talking here about a small example. So to get a broader view about uh, IoT, and the benefits, simply it's $11 trillion. And the market that is really disrupting is factories, cities, human, retail, you name it, it's there. So now we talk about the second part, which is the strategy. So when you hear the word digital, what comes in mind? Usually when you say a light bulb, you know, it's a very traditional light bulb that has been there for the last 140 years. But now we're talking about a connected light bulb where it knows you're coming, it knows where you are, what mood you want. So you can play with all of this. And this is where things are actually changing. So products, process, and services. This is what we have to look about in our strategy. We'll start by the first one, digital products. So digital products is about three things, physical, smart, and connectivity. So a digital product, if it's not physical, if it's not smart, if it doesn't have connectivity, it's not uh, a smart product. We'll go to the second one. Sorry, I'm moving fast due to the time. I know that the time is... Something happened here. Okay, sorry for that. So now, digital process. This is the second thing. The digital process can also bring in mind automation and process. When we talk about digital process, we mean business systems that take advantage of these technologies. We've seen them, we know them, but they are taking now into something new with the help of uh, new uh, technology, emerging technology. So processing mortgages, insurance, and so on. If you add to that, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening. Okay, so when you add to that uh, artificial intelligence and cognitive computing, now we're talking about disruption in this digital process. It's no longer a normal process. It's something very advanced, very futuristic, where things are really uh, disruptive. So can you think really today about a process that digital technology has not yet affected from payroll, accounting, everybody, bank mortgages, warehouses, you name it, hotel scheduling, your schedule, I'm more automated than ever. 
and, and especially in the last year, in the last nine months in my life, uh, things have been automated so, 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 so quickly that Satya Nadala said three years compacted into three months or two years compacted into more two months. Actually, it's much, much more due to the ripple effect that technology is fast. And now one thing is affecting another thing and things are crazy. So companies use digital optimization process that have competitive advantage because they can operate less expensively or work in ways. Let's talk here about neo banking, which is banks, digital banks, full of digital. So the operating cost is dropped. There's no branches. There's no employees in terms of the numbers. There's, there's so many things that has changed. The whole mentality has changed. And then we'll go and touch the second part, which is the three business transformation phases that we have to go to experimenting at the edge, reinventing at the root, and collision at the core. And this has to be done across your entrepreneurial journey or your company and so on. And then here we have the digital giants, the industry incumbents, and the tech entrepreneurs. So digital giants are such as Google and so on, industry incumbents such as any old bank, America Bank, Chase Manhattan, and so on, and tech entrepreneurs, which I think I'm part of this uh, people where we try to really force ourselves into the big games and companies come and try to create uh, something. So experimenting at the edge, uh, it's a beautiful thing that where you have to experiment, as Felipe said, fail, 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 and fail again, <laughs> and really until you get a product where uh, hopefully MVP, and then from there on, uh, you get something out of it. And then the second part, which is reinventing at the root, and you go to your company, you see where is your product, what is the most available product, what is the most successful product, and you start building something new based on that, so you don't stay in the past. And collision at the core, this is where you have to change everything and go forward and try to really make it in the whole market. So what sets, this is my last, I think, couple of slides, what sets a winning company from different companies, it's three things, scale, speed, and scope. So scale is the ability to get more product or services to more people. Look at Amazon, think of Amazon, how Amazon is really working. Where did Amazon start? As a book shop, and today where it is? It's serverless. It, we're talking cloud, we're talking advanced AI technologies, we're talking groceries now. <laughs> So second one is scope, the ability to sell a wider variety of products and services, and speed, the ability to do one or both of those things more quickly. And this is most of, our, not most, but many of our failures comes on speed, where we really time to market is traditionally without being agile and so on and so on is very, very slow and very low. So again, think of uh, the, the example of, uh, of uh, Amazon and how and where they are today, more than $100 billion of sales only. So there was a movie and there was another movie. I want to say thank you. I just want to, Andre, I just want to see if I can just show one movie. Go ahead. If I have the time for that. Go ahead. Yalla, just let me... Uh, stop sharing. Meanwhile, let's see your uh, comments about uh, Rudy, about uh, the sessions today. We're ending very early today because I guess most of you know that on Thursdays, I have the program Start Your Own Business with Amadeus Entrepreneur Institute. So we have entrepreneurs waiting for me. I have a workshop from six to nine. And if you are interested to join Start Your Own Business, connect on Amadeus Entrepreneur Institute and check their upcoming uh, program. It's a 15-week program, 45 hours, starting January. So if you have any comments on today, your feedback on uh, both sessions while waiting for uh, Rudy to check the video, uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, if you're finding our challenge valuable, because I would love to know. I would love to know what changed uh, after our uh, challenge. We're on day four, still have two days. Good, you're ready, Rudy? Mazanam Mukrandanagnat Patil. How far Munji Majasati Ayushisa? Mazayushi Chavu Tavulumunai.
सका सुरुआती साढ़े पांच वजता करेक्ट आम इत आम फार्म वरती मिलकिंग कर दूध अल तो घेन लवकर लवकर डेरी मध्य पोच कर Chitla Dairy produces somewhere around 400,000 liters of milk every day. The weakest part of the chain is the cow. So we have kept cows and farmers in focus, and innovation has to reach them. So whole cows to cloud program starts with capturing of cows data. Zero parts. I see. All data is kept in our Dell Technologies cloud. and disbursed to our farmers through sms and to the web yes gabun chik wagere yacha sathi message yetos tyas barobar amala tin mahine tun ekda jant nirman karnyasathi message patavla jato kurun amala lakshat yete ki baba kay tyanchat tyachat badal karayche he sage aplyala tyat mahiti mete ani tyamule amcha dudh utpadanat wadach hot ahe bhavishyat majya mulane ek 500 gai parent tar tene farm kadava ani chalava vyavsthit chalava डेरी मार्गदर्शन अवश्य हो things are really uh, moving a lot okay. thank you andre i'm taking i'll take some questions at this end yes you have nadim uh, jarjour he how to how do you tackle culture change while implementing digital transformation i guess here we need christine also to, to christine talk. i'm sure she's she's on i'm sure she's on but i'll i'll try to answer it in my uh, in my way uh, i'll have i'll have your answer and i'll let also christine answer in the chat Sure, sure. Uh I think one of the most challenging things is culture. <laughs> And that's why I think you are asking this question. But uh culture comes sometimes with uh maturity. And this is where uh and this is where the challenge comes in as first is the company mature, is the leadership mature or not. So for them to ask for a digital transformation, somehow there is some sort of maturity that you need to Uh, help uh, make it better, and this is where people like Christine and many others comes in and play their role in the uh, in the in the leadership and the culture. From my point of view, from our side, we have to help them uh, from technological maturity and technological uh, culture uh, aspect. And some of the companies they don't even know about you know uh, this type of things or technological culture. and it's a problem because if they are not self bred of or they know technology how can you innovate on, te on the technological field or even if you're not into a maturity level certain maturity level how can you innovate on a personal level so maturity and culture is something crucial for everybody i think the society has changed a lot uh, the dependence on uh, the youth is uh, is needed today for driving such a thing you know before the gray hair was really much needed it still is in some many countries but uh, when we see today i saw yesterday a pitch for somebody uh, 17 years old pitching for 1.5 million dollars so imagine trusting this guy if you're not mature <laughs> 1.7 million dollars 17 years old so there's a lot of self maturity self awareness self things and this is where it comes the coaching and andre's part uh, christine's part our part from the technology part uh, to really help these companies and this is where we see you know if we take example uh, not for the example but what's happening in the uae maturity is blossoming 
really it's blossoming. The strategies that is being there, you know, there's a lot of advisors to help. There's a lot of people to try to really go with a strategy towards something, towards a goal, towards maybe changing the whole life. And I think uh, the leadership of uh, UAE and more specifically on the Dubai side is something amazing and things are opening big time now. And uh, if you want to, you know, debate it on a normal level, you say, well, he's a he's an old person. He's not supposed, you know, to have such visions. Well, he had a vision. They all had a vision. They want to be somewhere. And this is where, you know, it helps you uh, jumping on the board. Rudy, thank you. Thank you thank for you. Uh, uh, transforming not only uh, digitally many other companies, also transforming the mindset of many people by following your, your talks. I already included the link in the, in the comments of this video. And also thank you for representing uh, us in many other international panels and also sharing your experience. Uh, a great journey for you and great opportunity for us to host you. Thank you, Rodi, and have a great evening. Thank you, Andre, and bye-bye to all, and uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you.